Our opening song is 311, Table of Plenty. And so as we gather this morning around God's table of plenty, we do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so as we sing that opening song, a couple of the verses, I think, touch on what we are celebrating today. The first verse talks about as we come sitting at our Lord's table, where saints and sinners are friends. Today we celebrate the memorial, a couple of memorials, but here in America we celebrate the memorial of blessed Francis Xavier Silos. And I'll share a little bit more about him, how he lived in the 19th century and what he did uh, for the church in a few moments. And then also another optional memorial is that of St. Faustina Kowalska, who also is a great saint that we celebrate as well. 
which is why when we were coming in, all of a sudden I realized I was thinking about these uh, memorials today. I realized I was wearing the wrong colored vestment because white is a symbol, a symbol uh, of the celebration that we celebrate that day, in this case, the memorial of these two saints. So that's why I ended up uh, changing into the white vestment. But speaking of change, we also hear this message of harvest, which in our last verse, it says, for I, the giver of home and harvest, will send my rain on the soil. Just a couple of days, we received a, a good rain, um, reminding us that God is always providing what he knows it is that we need. And that's why we continue to put our faith and our trust in him. But that word harvest also will be coming up in a few moments as well in the gospel. So I really invite you to listen closely to the gospel because it also talks about a harvest as well. Not a physical harvest that the, um, the opening song talked about, but another kind of harvest as well. And so as we gather here this day, asking that God will shower us with his mercy and love, let us begin our celebration by acknowledging our sins, those times we failed in sharing the love of God. And so let us begin by acknowledging our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made your priest blessed Francis Xavier Silos, outstanding in love, that he might proclaim the mysteries of redemption and comfort those in affliction, grant by his intercession that we may work zealously for your glory and for the salvation of mankind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. The whole people gathered as one in the open space before the water gate, and they called upon Ezra the scribe to bring forth the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord has prescribed for Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, therefore, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing up higher than all of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. 
Then they bowed their they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. As the people were remained in their places. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that they all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest, scribe, and the Levites, who are instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks. And allot proportions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened by this day. For rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. And the Levites quieted all the people saying, hush, for today is holy. And you must not be saddened. Then all the people went to eat and drink and distribute portions and to celebrate with great joy, for they understood the words that had been expounded to them. The word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true. All of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, 
the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we heard in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus reminding us that the harvest is abundant, but labors are few. And so then what does Jesus do? He ends up sending out his apostles, his disciples, to go out as laborers for that harvest. Well, fast forward, years later, our Lord is still inviting us and others to go out and to minister in his harvest, to bring others and ourselves closer to our God. Well, about a little over a century ago, we uh, celebrate the wonderful life of that of blessed Francis Xavier Silos, who took that invitation of going out and sharing that good news. Now, Francis Xavier Silos was what they call a redemptorist, redemptorist priest. And these priests, this community, this congregation is known for missions and, and sharing the faith and educating and leading people in the faith as well. Well, he was actually born over in Germany, and when he heard through the, the grapevine, so to speak, here in America, as the America was slowly growing, he heard that there's a, a group of Germanic people, people who are German descent, are really hungering for the faith. The harvest is abundant, but he also recognized that the labors are few. So he went and asked if he had permission to come and work and study over here in America, which eventually he did. And it was from that point on that he continued to minister to the people here in America, too, especially the German people, because he knew English, he knew German, he actually knew, knew French, and he definitely was a wonderful instrument of proclaiming that wonderful message of God here in America. He also was assistant pastor under um, St. John Newman, so he could definitely see how God's holiness rubbed off on him through this other saint and his ministry, and how his ministry of that of blessed Francis Xavier Silos, who was just canonized a little over a decade ago by St. John Paul II, now we look forward to the day when he will be canonized a saint. But nonetheless, blessed Francis Xavier Silos continued to share that message of God's love and God's mercy. He definitely opened the doors of the confessional, so to speak, in sharing that mercy of God to the people that were English descent and German and French. He even mentioned that God's mercy is to all people, black and white. During this time, a lot of things are going on. Slavery was being discussed and even being fought for during the Civil War. It was said during this time around 1863 or so, it was at this time that any man who was a certain age was, opt, was um, expected to join the military. So blessed Francis Xavier Silos went to the president himself, President Abraham Lincoln, and said, hey, can my redemptorist seminarians be exempted from this? And he kind of shared why. And his message was so you know, um, persuading that End up, um, Abraham Lincoln ended up agreeing and not only not only joined the military, but making sure that they did not have to go off to war. And so that wonderful ministry of Francis Xavier Silos continued to the people that he was serving, the seminarians, as well as his people that the community served as well. And so this message of mercy was something that he constantly preached. And I thought it was also fitting because today, as I mentioned, we celebrate the wonderful memorial of that of St. Faustina Kowalska, who also had a wonderful relationship with God and his mercy. It was said that she had a vision where our Lord, Lord spoke to her about his mercy, his divine mercy. And then he revealed to her that great, that wonderful image of his divine mercy where from his side comes water and blood, like rays shooting from his side as he reveals the mercy and the love of our Lord. Well, then she ended up capturing that in a painting, and we see that painting you know, all over the place of the divine mercy image of God. And so that wonderful mercy and image of God is uh, continued to be celebrated even today. And we're all called to do that, celebrating the mercy of God, to do it with joy, 
Now, I have to admit, oftentimes when we talk about mercy, we think maybe, you know, perhaps, you know, sadness and sorrow because of the sins that we committed. Well, that's not what mercy is about. It's about God's great love, the joy that God has for us when we return to him and he reconciles us and forgives us. That joy is what God wants all of us to have, that same joy that we heard in our first reading that Elizabeth shared from that of the book of Nehemiah. Keep in mind, this is a wonderful story because they're just getting back from Babylon. They've been in exile for 75 years. They're rebuilding the temple, rebuilding their homes, rebuilding their way of life once again. And so they're all gathered together. The priest scribe Ezra gets up, reads from the book of the law, and he shares the laws of God. And by sharing the law of God, they realize their sinfulness. They realize the things that they were doing wrong. They offended God, which is why they ended up going to Babylon in the first place. And so here, the priest Ezra is now sharing this message of God's law. They're recognizing the sorrow that they have in committing these sins. And what does Nehemiah do, the governor of Judah? Then he says, you know what? This is not a time of sadness. This is a time of joy because God is merciful. God is welcoming us back into our communities, back into our, our temple, back into our way of life again because of his mercy and love. This is not about us. This is not about sadness and being you know, depressed because of what we did wrong. But rather, instead, it's because of what God has done so right, his mercy and his love. And it's because of that that we are to have joy, that we are to celebrate with God. And that's the same message that God wants to pass on to us as well, that as we recognize the mercy and love of God that God has for us, we too, like blessed Francis Xavier Silos, are called to share the same message with others and to do it with great joy, that divine mercy and love that St. Faustina also proclaimed in her own life and her own ministry as well. God wants us to always repent and turn away from our sins to celebrate with joy his mercy and love that he wants to offer to us. And so as we gather here this day, let us pray that with these two saints and their help and their prayers, that God will help us always rely on the mercy of God. You know what? We are human. We are, are always going to fail and fall into sin. But we know that God's mercy is right there willing to forgive us and helping us so hopefully we can avoid these sins. And so that we pray that with their help and the wonderful message of God that we too might be the laborers of God's vineyard, going out into the harvest of ministry, bringing others and ourselves to the mercy and the love of God, celebrating God's love for us, the joy that he has for us, and that we too may experience that mercy and God's love and joy with one another. And just like a farmer who's out in the harvest gathering the, the produce, the fruits of his and her labors, we too are called to go forth and gather people to our Lord. Let us now gather our prayers together and bring them now, our petitions, now before God. For all who make up the church of Jesus Christ, that we may be a true house of prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Chad, Father Tony, and Deacon Ryan, and all ministers of the church, that they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in preaching the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they promote peace, justice, and hope in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a safe and bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a safe and successful marathon tomorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
in thanksgiving for the hundred years of blessings of St. Anne's School, and in hope that the blessings continue for hundreds of years to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they receive the fullness of God's grace and peace. We pray especially for Bernice Holm, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather this day, recognizing the harvest of ministry is abundant and laborers are few, we ask you to open our hearts to respond to your call of ministry, that we truly might bring others and ourselves closer to you as we place these prayers and our faith before you this day. We ask all this where you live and reign forever and ever. May you please be seated now as we prepare the altar and bring forward our offerings. Uh -oh. Our offertory song is 491, Love Burn Bright. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Francis Xavier Silos, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ 
our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Francis Xavier, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Chad, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
Number 337, The Supper of the Lord.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Francis Xavier Silos, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Before we go, I just want to thank all of you, family and friends of our school, for your ongoing support and your presence here this day. And to all of you, thank you for your participation as well, as well as to Ms. Getter, as well as the sixth graders for helping out with the various ministries, for those who helped with serving as well as with music, sharing our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. A uh, few announcements. One is tomorrow's first Friday, so be aware of any devotions that you might have, as well as first Saturday is on Saturday. We'll have Mass here at 8 o'clock, followed by um, the devotion to Our Lady, uh, Rosary for first Saturday offered as well. Confessions for an hour will be taking place after Mass, as well as the usual adoration as well. That's all on Saturday. Again, join us at 3 o'clock here at St. Anne's, where the National Rosary to Coast to Coast is taking place all throughout our nation at the 3 o'clock hour. We'll be gathering at 3 o'clock here, praying the Rosary, followed by the Divine Mercy Chaplet then as well. So join us on th Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock for that here at St. Anne's. Also, if you can keep in your prayers the repose of the souls of Mark Altermatt. He passed away. His Master Christian Burial is on Saturday, October 28th. Uh, they're hoping that uh, harvesting will be done by then, and that'll be at 11 o'clock on Saturday the 28th for Mark Altermatt, as well as Laverne Vern Bernardi. Um, he passed away. His arrangements are still pending. So if you can keep him and Mark and their families in prayer. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And finally, hopefully you all are getting out there, getting your pledges in. I don't know if today is the last day, but if not, can they still bring it in tomorrow or is it too late? It's supposed to be today. So if you need to get, get on the phone and call your parents, hey, we need more money. So whatever, um, family, friends of our school, if you have not given to our marathon, um, I believe my dinosaur costume should be here tomorrow or today actually, so hopefully um, that's something I can wear tomorrow afternoon for dodgeball. Um, again, that we reach our goal, and, uh, and hopefully uh, that goal will be reached by the generosity of all of you, um, students going out there, as well as family and friends of our school for your support as well. With that, I pray you all have a wonderful day and a very blessed rest of the week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. The closing song is 562, 10,000 Reasons. Then your heart is 
is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. A thousand reasons for my heart to find. Yes, the Lord of my soul, of oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And when my strength. Is falling, it's when the struggle of the has come. Still, my soul went singing, it is landing. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, my soul, I'll worship your holy name, worship your holy name, I'll worship your holy name. O sacrament, O soli, O sacrament.